children, that battle over your procession, the Lord will fight for you. Exodus 23 and verse 22. Exodus 23 verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be enemy unto thy enemy and adversary unto your adversary. I'd like you to lift your voice in a moment. Father, fight for me this morning. Fight for my marriage. Fight for my health. Fight for my promotion. Fight for my contract. Fight for me this morning. I thought you were praying. Fight for me this morning. You are the mighty man in battle. Fight for that mockery of my life this morning. Will you lift your voice and let him hear you? Lord, fight for me this morning. Show yourself. Show yourself. Show yourself. Show yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have prayed. Exodus 14 and verse 14. The Lord will fight for you. And you will hold your peace. And how did he do it? He drowned Pharaoh. How did he do it? He drowned all his chariots. God will show up in the, in the camp of your adversary. Will you lift your hand and let's worship him this morning. Jehovah.
him know you are here. Let him know you are here. Zaria kato kata lida di baba boshte. Angla no bomba bamba bande ketelia. Zuria kato shalista. Endolo boskanda lia roste. Mighty warrior. Show yourself. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given time. And Father, we thank you. We have come to you today because you are our last resort. We have come to you today because you have the final say. Undertake for each one in this service this morning. Prove that you are God over the earth. Prove that you are the judge of all judge. Prove that you have the final say over every contention, over any family and individual here today in the name of Jesus. By this service, prove that your vengeance is real. Let your vengeance report in the cup of the adversary. Let the release of your blessing come upon your people. Thank you, Heavenly Father. As we receive your word, let the light of your world, the indisputable light, the light that cannot be resisted, shatter every darkness. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Will you put that hands together for Jesus? And have your seat. The winning camp is a celebrating camp. In your family, in your business, the voice of shout of rejoicing will know no limit to the end of this year. You have entered the second half of the year. It shall be second half of rejoicing. Second half of jubilating. Second half of victory. In the name of Jesus. You are most welcome to this special anointing service. And like I said in the first service, we don't just do things because we feel like doing it. Anything done in this place, in this commission, has a scriptural root and has Holy Ghost direction. You are anointed to be anointed today for a purpose. And as you are anointed, just like no king reigned in, in Israel until he's anointed, you will begin to reign. Reign over whatever used to reign over you. Reign over sickness. When you reign over sickness, you stay in divine health. When you reign over, over poverty, you live in supernatural abundance. When you reign over failure, you, leave, you command dominion for success and excellence. That will be your portion this time. It's also our covenant day of vengeance. Whatever will not let you go, we go. Whatever is defiling the name of Christ in your life, whatever is contesting against the glory of God in your life, whatever has looked down on your God, this time I see God's vengeance upon them in the name of Jesus. For you, you are returning with all that has been denied it at all in the name of Jesus. Our teaching series we'll be looking at the prophetic focus has been, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If you like to read it, say with me, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It is a personal decision that brings about personal benefit. Until he is your personal shepherd, you cannot enjoy his personal supply. The Lord is my shepherd. It's not that we shall not want. No. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want because I know his capacity. 
I shall know war because I will cry, subscribe for his shepherdhood. I shall know war because when he leads, everything answers to his guidance. When he leads, I am secured. When he leads, I am provided for. When he leads, I am well guided. He will lead you this time. In our Sunday series, this is part 3B. We're looking at understanding how God leads. God leads in different ways. But we must understand the way in which he leads so that we can follow. The job of the shepherd is to lead. The job of the sheep is to follow. If the sheep does not know how the shepherd leads, the sheep will miss the track. The Lord is my shepherd. For me to know his leading, I must understand how he leads. And this is very important. In Psalm 103 verse 7, he says, he made his ways or his guidance or his leading or his path known to Moses, his act to the children of Israel. And if you observe, every time they are at the crossroad on the way to the land of promise, they always call on to Moses. Why? He knows the instruction per time. He knows the guardian per time. That's why he had the answer per time. From this moment, by his guidance, you will not be stranded again. I did not hear your amen very loudly. I said you will not be stranded again. Understanding determines the what you gain from life. How much you understand determines the degree of your delivery. Psalm 119 and verse 144, the psalmist said, give me understanding that I may live. So many are dead because of lack of understanding. Many are destroyed because of lack of understanding. Now listen to me. Many have knowledge, but they don't have understanding. I know the Lord is my shepherd. Okay, how does he lead? How do I follow his leading? In between knowledge and application is understanding. Understanding is interpretation for right application. When you understand, you begin to see what others are hearing. When you understand, others may be reading, others may be writing. You begin to see beyond what they are writing and reading to the point of application. Today, the understanding of his guidance, of his leading, may be, may be released upon someone here in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 55 and verse 12. Isaiah 55 and verse 12. For ye shall go out with joy. If you do, let me hear your amen. No more sorrow around you from now. And he, I'm be led Take note of that. And be led forth in peace. And be led forth with peace. The mountain, because of his leading, the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. Singing. That means what used to be a barrier we join to become raw material for your result. We, the mountain we sing before thee and all the tree of the field shall clap their hands. That will be your testimony from now. That means you cannot be led and be stranded. When he leads you, he makes everything work for you. In fact, Romans 8 and verse 28, it says, all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. You are a child of destiny. God has a purpose for you. It is divine guidance that takes you in that path. And when you follow that path, everything works for you. For your marriage, for your relationship, for your finances, for everything works for you. Because on the way of your purpose, 
He tells you every instruction to bring about your glory. This is it. I see that answer for you in the name of Jesus. We'd like us to know that God still, lead, God, God still leads believer today in order to make the most of life. He still leads the believer today and the reason is so that you can make the most of life. Isaiah 48 and verse 17. He said, I'm the Lord thy God, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, that teacheth thee to profit and leadeth thee in the way that thou shouldest go. God still leads today, and the ultimate of his leading is for your profiting, not for your losses. He leads you to progress. He leads you to profit. He leads you to be promoted. He leads you to set the pace. It leads you into your provision. It leads you into peace. That is what it leads you to. It still leads even today. For that battle, God will lead you to victory. I say we guide you to the path of your increase. In the name of Jesus. Among many things, when it leads you, you have this ten peace. Number one, it leads you to peace. You enjoy his peace. Proverbs 3 and verse 17 and 18. All his ways are ways of peace and all his paths are part of pleasantness. Now, number two, progress. It leads you in the part of progress. Exodus 12 and verse 12. They were before the Red Sea, but it said, God go forth. And they went forth. Verse tw Exodus Exodus 14 and verse 14 and 15. Number two or number three, it leads you, it brings about his presence. Everywhere God's voice goes, his presence goes. His presence goes. Psalm 29 verse 5 to verse 9. Psalm 29 verse 5 to verse 9. One more, when he leads you, he empowers you. He engraces you. That power there represents grace. George 6 and verse 14. He told, he told Gideon, he said, go in this day. Have I not empowered you? Have I not engraced you? Number 6, when he leads you, he brings about provision. Provision. That is castness ends. Isaiah 48 and verse 21. He said, they, they tasted not when he led them. The end has come to every task around you today. One more, when he leads you, you are protected. Psalm 23, and verse 4 to verse 6, he protects you. Though you walk through the valley of shadow of death, you fear no evil because he protects you. One more, when he leads you, you set the pace. You set the pace, you become a pace setter. You become a reference point among others. God is leading you this time. In Deuteronomy 32 and verse 9 to verse 12, when he leads you, you set the pace. He set the pace like the eagle. When he leads you, you make profit. Proverbs, Isaiah, sorry, Isaiah, 40, Isaiah 48 and verse 17. When he leads you, he makes you to have profit. One more. When he leads you, you possess your possession. Nehemiah 9 and verse 12. He led them in the land. He led them with the, through the wilderness. He led them day and night into the land they should go. And number 10. When he leads you, you are promoted. You are not under. You are top. He leads you to be promoted. In that scripture, in Exodus 33, verse 14 to verse 16. Moses was, lead, was led. No wonder he was ahead of all of them. Today, I see him leading you in the name of Jesus. Understanding how God leads. How does he lead? Knowing the how is having the key. Knowing the how of any subject matter is having the key. And having the key commands authority. When you have the key, you have the authority over that matter. Knowing the how. 
is one thing to hear, is another thing to know. So how, knowing the how, how to assess divine guidance. Number one, through prayer and fasting. You assess divine guidance by prayer and fasting. So when we pray and fast, one of the things we enjoy is divine guidance. In Isaiah 58, verse 6 to verse 8, it says, Is this not the fast I have chosen to undo heavy body? If you get to verse 8, it said, Then shall your light break forth. That means answer will come. The breakdown will suddenly turn to breakthrough. The what seemingly look like defeat, God will give you strategy for victory. He said, and thy health shall break forth speedily. And thy righteousness go forth before thee. And the glory of the Lord shall be your very world. While I was in, I was in um, or your town, 2004. There's this Baptist pastor. He went to be with the Lord at 86. He was a sickle cell person. And the son is a deacon in the church. And I see people come from Ghana, some of the West African countries, and everywhere in Nigeria to the house. And I say, who is the doctor they are coming to see? Who is in this house? He said, no, there's no doctor in this house. He said, but so what, what are they coming for? He said, they're coming to take what Baba left for them. I said, what did he leave? The man, before he passed on, with a challenge of sickle cell, went before the Lord and said, God, what is the answer to this affliction? And the Lord led him. He said, go, now begin to walk. And he began to walk into the bush. He said, pick that leaf, pick that one, pick that one, pick this one. And when he got back home, by instruction, he knew what to do with it. And that kept him to 86. After that, he left it for the children. So people come from different places because somebody demanded for given guidance. I don't know where you have been stranded before. As you wait upon the Lord this time, you will receive instruction. Amen. That person, amen, is coming alive. Amen. If you read verse 11 of the same Isaiah 58, he said, the Lord shall guide thee continually. I'm not going to retire in guiding you. I'm not going to back out in guiding you. God means to say, I want to guide you on your journey. I want to guide you in your investment. I want to guide you in all your decisions. The decision of your relationship. The decision of that decision you must take in your office. I want to guide you. The Lord shall guide you continually and satisfy thy bone and drought. That means inside of farming, you will enjoy plenty. And make fire thy bone, and thou shalt be like a water garden, and like a spring of water, whose water faileth not. This is the blessing you get when you fast and pray. A group of people were accosted by three nations. Jehoshaphat and Judah. The king Jehoshaphat and Judah. In 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 2 and 3, the Bible says, And they engage in a fast. It says, And Joseph appeared and set himself, and they engaged, verse 2, please. But they, they engaged in a fast. And if you go to verse 3, they began to fast. The Lord send us help in this matter. What do we do? Then if you get to verse 14, down to verse 17. The word of the Lord came in the midst of the fast. This was a three days fast. The word of the Lord came in the midst of the fast. That you need not to fight. A word of instruction came. You need not to fight against this matter. This army. This three sold, uh, national army that came. All you need to do is set yourself. The instruction came inside the fast. Today, as you wait on him, he will guide you in your business. It will show you the way to have better profit. It will show you the way to, to take over this city. If that is you, let me hear your loudest amen. And we saw the instruction. 
it brought about their victory. This time, no more defeat around you. You are returning as a man, as a woman of victory. Please, when you wait upon the Lord, always be, always take the posture of a, of a waiter. Lord, what are you saying? In fact, the prayer of divine direction, when you wait upon him, is the prayer of inquiry. Is the prayer of inquiry. Is the prayer of inquiry. Nothing can take the place of divine direction. One man that enjoyed so much direction, and he was a man that prayed, and the man that fast was a man by the name Joseph, by the name David. If you see Second Corinthians, Second Second Samuel five, and verse Second Samuel five and verse seventeen, the Bible says, "And when the Philistine heard that David was anointed, he did not provoke them. They just heard that he was anointed, and what did they do?" The Bible says all the Philistines came up to seek David and when they heard that he went, and he went down to hold them. Now if you read verse 19, and David inquired of the Lord. That is in prayer. I want to believe David may be fasting that day. And inquire of the Lord. Shall I go against the Philistines? Will you, will thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto David, go up. For I will doubtless deliver the Philistine into thy hand. And God delivered him. And David came to Baal-Perazim. And David smote them there and said, The Lord had broken forth upon my enemies before me. And as the branch of uh, the breach of water, therefore he called the name of the place Baal-Perazim. Now look at what happened. Verse 21. And there... They left the images, the images, and David and his men burned them. Verse 22. Let's read verse 22 together. And the Philistine came up yet again in the same chapter. If you are the one, I'm sure you will just say, what is it? The way I went the first time, I'm going the same, the same time. But look at what David did. Verse 22. They came against David again. And verse 23. And when David inquired, he went again to inquire. Lord, what are you saying? What he told you in January may not work in December. He knows the end from the beginning. Lord, what are you saying? And he said something again. He said, form a compass around them. You see, most times we pray for victory in battle. God is out to give you strategy instead. There are some strategy you have, you will not even fight. You will not even fight at all. Today, begin to experience sweatless victory. I'm not sure I heard it very loudly. So when we engage in a fast and pray, in fasting and praying, we secure divine guidance. Number two, how do we assess divine guidance? We assess divine guidance by remaining in law with God. When we remain in law, walking in the love of God, God opens up us to his guidance. He tells us all that is concerning us. In 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9 and 10. It says, eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, neither has it come to the, to the nor, nor ears heard, neither has it come, and has it entered into the heart of man, the things which God had prepared for them that love him. God has something prepared for you. Your love for God makes you God's confidence. God tells you where you need to go, how you need to go about it. Love for God means pleasing God. When you walk to please God, when you walk to, to obey his commandment, he guides you in all your way. John 15 and verse 15. John 15 and verse 15. He said, here, henceforth, I call you not servant, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. But I have called thee friends. Love makes you a friend of God. For all things that I have had of my father, what will I do? I have made it known unto you. It tells you what you need to do and how you need to go. You see, your love for God keeps you in fellowship with God. And you cannot be in communion and fellowship with God without having him telling you all that is ahead of you. We saw the case of Abraham. God was going to destroy sodium. 
He said, look, can I do anything without telling Abraham, my friend? So he went through the house of Abraham and said, Abraham, this is what I want to do. Can you, do you have anything to say? You become God's confidence. It tells you a secret. That is what the love of God does. Today, I see your love for God burning stronger and stronger in the name of Jesus. So walking in the love of God opens you to divine guidance. What are the proof of his guidance? When he guides you, you experience supernatural confidence. You have confidence. You have confidence. You have confidence when he guides you. That means there is faith in what you do. There's confidence. You experience confidence when he guides you. You experience confidence when he guides you. You are not in doubt. The Bible say in strength and in is it by waiting and in wisdom shall thy confidence be. It is in waiting on him, in receiving instruction, you have confidence. I think Isaiah 33, verse 6, in you have confidence. That is what it tells you. It spark up your faith to believe. It sparks up your faith to believe. Today, I see your confidence come alive. So when your confidence is being eroded, his guidance may have been neglected. He, his confidence come alive. Faith come alive in you when he guides you on any subject matter. Well, the next one, can, for instance, when God's servant was told, this is the place. Now you are moving from one state to another state with about 50,000 uh, 50, uh, persons. Now, you know what happened? When we moved from the former church in Rajoba down, They came to God's server one day, some engineers, because we have faith tabernacle with, with, four, with three wings. And he said, some of the wings are just trying to get filled up. And as of that time, say, can we make a curtain so that it will have electric remote control? We just cover some place that are empty. And that time, it was about 28 I think 28 million they were going to do use for it. And God's servant said, if he said it, he will bring the people. T.L. Osborne came to Canaan land after it was dedicated. And he said, where are the people? Because everyone is concerned about the people. This looks like a bush. It's not like it is now. He said, they are already here. God's servant replies, they are already, they are already here. Confident reply. Now you have four services there today. Confidence goes with divine guidance. I seek confidence answer for you in Jesus' name. What more is a proof of divine guidance? When he guides you, you enjoy divine strength. Divine strength. There is energy. Energy. You enjoy divine strength. Ephesians 3 and verse 16. It said the Lord standing with his strength in the grandee according to his riches strengthen thee with might in the inner man. There is energy to match the instruction. There is divine strength to accomplish what he has said to you. In Judges 6 and verse 14, God spoke to Gideon. He said, have I not called you? Go in this their might. So you, are not, you, you just have unusual energy. Everything that is required to pursue his guidance follows you. Today, I see the blessings of divine guidance answer for you in the name of Jesus. Lift your right hand and just tell him, Lord, lead me on, Lord. Guide me all through, Lord. I submit to your guidance. I want to follow your leading. Guide me on, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. In this covenant day of vengeance, whatever is taunting your Christian identity, Whatever is mocking your redemptive right, today we call them judge in the name of Jesus. That amen is coming up gradually. I said today we call them judge in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 43 and verse 3 and 4. Isaiah 43 and verse 3 and 4. It says, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, 
there is Savior. When God begins to introduce himself that way, one, he wants you to take attention on who he is. Two, he's about to do something. He said, I gave Egypt for a ransom. That's a whole nation for a ransom. And Ethiopia and Seba for thee. And verse 4, hear what it says. Since thou wert precious in my sight. How many precious people do I have here? Let me ask your neighbor, how precious are you? You are so precious that it takes the blood of a savior to save you. You are so precious that it came all the way just to rescue you from hell. He says, since thou art precious in my sight, thou art honorable. He said, and because you are precious and honorable, I, will, I have loved thee. Therefore, I will give men for thee and people for your life. Whoever say you will not go, whoever say you will not realize God's glory in your life, they will go for you in the name of Jesus. Whatever is contending with your turnaround blessing is your year of turnaround. Every resistance in your finances, resistance in the work of your hand, resistance in your workplace, we command vengeance this time in the name of Jesus. Every force that will not let you go, they go for you today in the name of Jesus. I told you I'm saying very loud, amen. Jeremiah 46 and verse 10. Jeremiah 46 and verse 10. Jeremiah 46 and verse 10. He said, For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts. If this is the day, let me hear your amen. A day of vengeance that he may avenge him his adversary. And the sword shall devour. And it shall be started the, and made drunk with the blood for the Lord of hosts as, as a sacrifice in the north country for the river Everett. Today, Whatever has been taunting you, whatever has stood to defile the name of the Lord in your life, I command that the judgment of God come upon them. In 2 Kings 20, 2 Kings 2 and verse 24, 2 Kings 2 and 24, the Bible says, and Elijah was going, and these area boys were mocking him, thou bow head, thou bow head. And he turned back. The Bible says, and he turned back and looked on them and caused them in the name of the Lord. And they came to respond from God. And they came for two she beards out of the wood and tear 42 of these children. Whatever is mocking your testimony, the vengeance of God shows of this time. I said the vengeance of God shows up this time. Jesus prayed the prayer of vengeance. Because in case you are holy, you say, well, um, you say, I, I just believe in love. I just believe, uh, you know, just God, just doing. This faith has two sides. In Luke 18 and verse 8, Luke 18 and verse 8, Jesus was giving a parable and began to say, look, there is this woman. She keeps pleading for her case. But this judge was a wicked judge. And he does not fear God. He doesn't fear man. He said, but hear what I'm saying to you now. You disciples. He said, I tell you that, I will, that he will avenge this speedily. That if when you call on God, he will avenge you speedily. You are wrong. We are in the day of a, a lot of injustice. Those days while I was on campus, I used to tell them, anybody being molested, come to me. Because I understood it before me, most of them. And I do remember one of my, the person that handed over to me as the Bible study secretary in our fellowship. Shegun. Shegun Bigwemi. Uh, a surveying student, a first class material that failed project. All his mates left. 
Shegun was now left running on, about on campus. But he, he was my senior boy, doesn't have this understanding. You to repeat project, this boy was too intelligent. So, one day he was passing by, I just saw him on campus. He said, sir, can I see you, sir? Something came on me. And I held him, I said, now in the name of Jesus, whatever has held you in this place, lose you now. Let heaven respond. We pray that prayer. Open your prayer and pass. That week, the man holding him back from him not graduating had an accident. He was still on the hospital bed with a leg hanging. He said, call him. Call him. He said, we are sorry. He said, I've been wicked to you. The reason is, we felt if you come, you will soon become a professor. Every satanic conspiracy against your life, against your destiny. Whoever will not let you go, the vengeance of God come upon them. Anyone that has put something in your business, put something on your car, put something on your road, I command that hand with that. He said, I need to turn back. I'd like you to turn back right now. Open fire in prayer. Anyone, whoever it may be, whosoever it may be, any work of the wicked, wickedness of the wicked, against your business, against the work of your hand, against your rising, whoever will not let you go, we command them to go. Laria Sharia. Every demonic blanket, every wickedness of the wicked, we call them George today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please sit there for a moment. Three nations ganged up against Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat said, we don't know what to do. Second Chronicles 20 and verse 12, he began to pray. He said, will you not judge them, Lord? What have we done? He said, oh God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great army that came against us. Neither we know what to do for our eyes upon thee. And you saw what God did? He fought for them. Today, anything the wicked has done against your glory, God will fight for you this morning. Yeah. We had this testimony about him. This man is a politician. He was pasting his poster for his party and his candidacy. And uh, Somebody mocked him and said, look, he doesn't even have a child. And he's a winner. And he went back and began to fast for three days. On the third day, he was caught up in the vision. And he saw three individuals. And they backed him. And said, let him have his child now. Let him have his, the heat is too much. Let him have his child now. On the third day, he went and laid hand on the wife's tummy. He said, now bring forth. Nine months after, a baby boy came forth. Every human figure every agent of darkness, every Pharaoh figure, standing between you and your land of promise, standing between you and your testimony, I call them, bow in the name of Jesus. <laughs> sit down, sit down. If my in-law see someone like me, they will give more wife to the person. You don't understand what I said? If my in-laws see someone like me, that wants to marry from their family, they will give more. My wife had an elder sister. And what happened? She's a winner. And all of a sudden, she's so good. She's so good. She can, she's all just good. We call her magician. That's what they call her in the family. She's just so good. She reads. One day I asked her, what's your secret? They said, look, I read, I read a lot. So there are some things that even some doctors will be struggling. She already knows what to do. She reads. 
There are delicate cases is the one she answers, uh -huh, handles. So, all of a sudden, she became sick. Three times, she came out of her body. Three times. That is going finally. So, the husband saw, she wasn't eating. The husband felt, this is enough. So, they took her in an ambulance on the way to Canaan. They got to Canaan, God's servant was not on seat. They stayed in the camp house that night. The following morning, he said, no, we are coming. I was, I was still in, I was in Abuja, somewhere in Abuja here. And he came. And we had to go and receive them at the airport, Dana Air. The father was around. When the father saw the daughter, he started rolling on the floor that this is not my daughter. She has emaciated. I said, God, what do we do on this matter? What is your guidance? He said, wash her feet. So in that parlor that day, we start praising God. After we finish praising, he said, wash her feet. And she washed her feet. That same day, she started eating. One week after, you will not believe. People that carried her will not believe she's the one. But here's the story. When, after some few weeks, or few days, she went back to Lagos. When she got to her workplace, the person behind the ordeal began to confess. He said, I'm the one behind it. He said, I want to charm you because I, I felt I was so jealous about you. It's always you. It's always you. Everybody's always you. And the sickness fell on that person. Now, listen to me. Deuteronomy 7, verse 15. Every sickness that has been insane against you, I declare this hour, according to this scripture, your enemy begin to carry it. Whoever is behind the ordeal of your health, that thing that can cannot discover, that moving object in your body, I send it back to the sender. That's what vengeance is about. It says, since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God, Luke 16 and verse 16, it says, take it forcefully. Your take requires force. And one of the force required is a force of vengeance. Today, anything sitting over your business that will not allow that business to move forward. Some people have conspired. They have enchanted things in the day or in the night. I command vengeance upon them in the name of Jesus. Every siege over any family, there is something running in the home. There is death moving in the family. Whoever is behind it, the hand of the Lord is upon them today. You have that testimony. You have that testimony. That young man for 27 years in the first service. 27 years. He said he was under oppression and torment. Then he happened to come to this church. Before that time, he said any time he gathers his money, it disappears in his house. So they invited him. And he came as a first timer. And he carried the portfolio of the first timer that no, they are normally given and put it side by side with his money. He said, from that time, his money was not missing. He said, before this time, the little money he was able to gather with his friend, he married two months after the wife died. But when he kept that thing side by side with the pamphlet, pamphlet he got from church, he woke up in the morning and found two dead rats. And that same day, two of his uncle, they died. And from that time, that she sees. Any woman figure, every name that is named, that is responsible to your torment, I command it to come back upon them. Anything they have insane against your children, we send it back to them today. Isaiah 49 and verse 26. Isaiah 49, verse 26. The, Isaiah 49, verse 26. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. 
And they shall be drunken with their own blood. As with a sweet wine, and with a, with a, with all, and all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, I am thy Savior, thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. God will do it for you this time. In the name of Jesus. Every satanic installation is destroyed. Every invincible hand trailing you is destroyed. The heat of God come against every trail and familiar spirit. You see, familiar spirit are close people but walking against you. Or you cannot, except you have discernment. It's walking to kill you, yet it's smiling with you. Every familiar trail of women or any agent, the fire of God come upon them in the name of Jesus. Whatever has defiled your business, defiled your health, defiled your career, every satanic molestation against you, we see them judge this morning. Why vengeance? Somebody may ask. Why vengeance? To bring an end to the wickedness of the wicked. To bring an end to the wickedness of the wicked. Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 11. It says, because judgment does not proceed speedily, because sentence against the evil works is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set to do more evil. Is set to do more evil because nobody stopped him. I say stop this morning in the name of Jesus. Why vengeance? That men may fear. Vengeance is because God wants men to fear. He wants men to fear him. When he executes vengeance, we saw that in Acts 13 and verse 9 to verse 10, while Paul was preaching to the deputy, the, that deputy, while he was preaching to the deputy, that man came in between and began to obstruct what Paul was preaching. And the Bible said, Paul turned on him and said, look, be blind for a season. The moment the deputy saw it, he said, no, I want to be born again right now. Anything that is contending with the process of your progress, I see God contend with them this time. Why vengeance? It is the only language the wicked understand. It is the only language the wicked understand. Psalm 66 verse 3, through the greatness of thy power, shall the wicked, shall the enemies submit themselves. Through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves. That is the only language the wicked understand. Isaiah 66 verse 10, it says, show good to the wicked, he will still be wicked. As, as that 20, as that 26 verse 10, show good to him. He doesn't have that intention to change. He says, while hand is in hand, he says, show good to the wicked, the wicked will continue to do wickedness. Today, I see God intervene for someone in the name of Jesus. How do I provoke divine vengeance? Number one, be on God's side. Be on God's side. Be on God's side. To be on God's side is to be on righteous side. To be on God's side is to give your life to Christ. He said, they that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the, Most High, of the, of the Almighty. Psalm 91, 1 to verse 7. Be on God's side. Romans 8 and verse 31. If God be for you, who can be against you? So be on God's side. Not be dilly darling. No. Not being at the right today, at the left tomorrow. Be on God's side. The side of righteousness. Know that you are tampering with things of the occult and yet you are in church. Be on God's side. Number two, engage the weapon of your mouth. Engage the weapon of your mouth. You need your mouth to open fire. You need your mouth to command the authority. Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 4. Where the voice of the king is, there is power. So don't keep your mouth shut. Whatever is working against my destiny, fire of God devour you. Whatever is impeding my advancement, God of heaven, show yourself. Luke 21 and verse 15. He said, Jesus himself spoken. He said, Luke 21 and verse 15. 
So I will give you a mouth and a wisdom that none of your adversary will be able to gainsay or resist. There's something in your mouth when you open it. All that Moses was going to do in Egypt, God said, you may have the rods. He said, but I will be with your mouth. Exodus 4, and verse 12. I will be with your mouth. So don't keep your mouth shut. Open it wide and God will subdue your adversary. Open it wide. That thing looks like a siege over, over your project. Every siege over this world be lifted. Open your mouth and take your authority. Praise the Lord. Well, the next one. Engage Holy Ghost rooted prayer and praise. Engage Holy Ghost rooted prayer and praise. Psalm 35, verse 1 to verse 5. Psalm 35, 1 to 5. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. He said, take hold of thy of shield and, buck, and buckler and stand up for my help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Verse 4. He said, let them be confounded. Say amen. amen. And put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them turn back and be brought to confusion. That devise my heart. Whoever is imagining wickedness against you. I command the wickedness to come upon them. This is the prayer of David. Verse 5. He said, let them be as chaff before the wheat. He said, let the angel of the Lord chase them. <laughs> you chase them in a dream. Chase them when they sit down. Angel will chase some people this week. So engage in prayer. In, in, in that scripture, in Acts 16 and verse 25 and 26, he said, he said, as they began to sing and to praise, God set a bushman against the adversary. So engage in prayer and praise. I shared that testimony with you over there in Lokoja. This uh, friend is a doctor, a medical doctor and a pastor. One of the main churches in, 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 in uh, Lokoja there. And he was going to build a house and the uncle said, no, you cannot build a house in his, in his country home. He said, bring the money, I will build for you. He said, no, you can't. I have my artisan. Uh, Lokoja is not far from my place. Let me come and build it. I have my people that will come. So he began the building. All of a sudden, his eyes turned yellow. And when he checked, they told him he had a chronic liver disease. And he has hours to go. So he told the wife by morning, he said, we'll prove who is serving God and who is not serving God. And he engaged in praise from 8 a.m. to 12 noon, four hours, and began praising God. By the time he finished by 12 noon, the coloration in his eyes had disappeared. But see what happened. That same hour, the uncle in the village carried the same coloration, began to swell, and died that day. So there's power in praise and prayer. Engaging the same. As a family, engaging the same. I don't know what you do with social media. You cannot connect with your brothers and sisters in different places and pray on a subject. And let me see the devil that will sit down there. This is the end of that affliction around your family. I told you I said an amen. Well, finally,